Hello again and welcome to the War 40k Imperial Guard video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Kieran O. Carahall for sending in some awesome pictures of his army on parade. This is a very, very impressive Imperial Guard army. Love the composition of the Empire bits and the Guard bits with the converted LAS guns. And what looks really, really, what, what I like most about it is the sort of the feudal uniforms combined with the urban hive city vibe of like the bases and the vehicles really really cool sort of juxtaposition like it a lot so thank you for sending these pictures in kieran if anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos please post them on my facebook page there will be a link down in the description below and if you don't use facebook then you can email them to me at morningglorytv at gmail .com. Com. But let's get into today's video. So what we're going to be taking a look at today, guys, is the FAQs for the Imperial Guard and how, how they're going to be, how it's going to affect the army. So there's four sources we can be looking at. There's the Imperial Armor Compendium, the Greater Good, the uh, Codex, and the Main Rulebook. Now straight away we can tick a couple of these off. There's been no changes in the Imperial Armor Compendium, and there has been a small change to the uh, uh, Greater Good. Uh, psychic awakening supplement but it's for crusade it's for narrative play so we're not going to cover that here we're going to focus on the matched play and the competitive play side of 40k so <laughs> covered two already i told you, this is going to be a much quicker video than the last one which went on for quite a long time didn't mean for the last one to go on for that long but we did do quite a lot of analysis so you know fair enough but um the next one we're going to look at is the astra militarum codex this is the first meaty one now Crusaders, I don't know if this had changed previously, but this is the first time I'm seeing it. Their storm shields have changed. Finally, they have been brought in line with the main uh, sort of the main way storm shields are working now in 9th edition. So no longer do you get a 3 plus invulnerable save. We are now down to a 4 plus invulnerable save, but plus 1 armor save. Now this is going to have a couple of significant impacts. Um, we're going to try and cover them relatively uh, quickly. So firstly, it means we can no longer get up to a 2 plus in vulnerable save. That was really nice being able to do that. Um, and how you got up to that 2 plus save is you had a 3 plus in vun and then you used psychic barrier on a big squad of crusaders and that gave them plus 1 save and they went up to a 2 plus in vulnerable save. That is no longer possible. If you cast psychic barrier on a Crusader squad, you will get back to your original 3 plus invun, and that's it. So, big, I see that as a big blow to Crusaders. Um, they used to be very good at um, just surviving everything because even if they didn't have great damage output because they were only strength 3, now they were strength 4 thanks to power swords, but it's, you know, so they got a slight damage output increase thanks to power swords but now that their storm shields have been nerfed they're not as durable and at the end of the day if you want to hurt things in combat you take bulgrins if you wanted to just tarp it the crap out of the enemy you wanted to take crusaders and now their main job has definitely uh being overshadowed by bulgrins considering bulgrins are now cheaper you know seven points cheaper per model you know, you can basically get one Bulgrin for two Crusaders, but the Bulgrin will have the same invulnerable save as a Crusader, but have, what, about, you know, more wounds. I believe a Crusader's only got, uh, we'll double check this now, guys. I believe Crusader's only got one wound each, but um, I shall double check. Should have checked this before the video, but we're doing it live. Um, here we go. We are getting to the Crusaders. Uh, yeah, one wound each. Good job I checked. So, um... Basically, for the same cost as two Crusaders, you can get a Borgrin who has the same invulnerable save. He's tougher. He's got more wounds. He's stronger. There's very little reason to be looking at Crusaders now in terms of durability. Point for point, they are not as durable as Borgrins. So that's a shame. Now, obviously, Borgrins uh, with the Invuln Shield only get a uh, 4 plus armor save, and Crusaders will have a 3 plus invulnerable save. But AP is very liberally sprinkled throughout 40k. Now, as we've mentioned before, the lethality of the game has gone up. So more often than not, you're going to be on that 4 plus invulnerable save. Or 3 plus if you manage to get Psychic Barrier off. But basically, you're not going to be using that 3 plus armor save as much if you're out in the open. Now, what it does mean, guys, it does open up some interesting things, though. To write Crusaders off completely 
uh, would be unfair. So they have a 4 plus armor save standard. With the shield, they now have a 3 plus. If you use the stratagem take cover on them, they get a 2 plus. If you use psychic barrier on them, they get a 1 plus. If you have them in cover, they get a 0 plus save. That's not insignificant. That means that for someone shooting them with a plasma gun, they're going to be on a three up invulnerable, uh, three up save still. So you have to hit them with a las cannon to force them onto their uh, invulnerable save. And even then, you'll what is it? You've, you've got four. You have uh, four plus plus one for the three plus for the shield plus one for take cover plus one. So that goes from a 3 plus to a 2 plus or a 1 plus psychic barrier. Yeah, so even if you hit them with a a a las cannon, you still only, that's when you hit the 3 plus and vulnerable save. So they are actually pretty durable and uh, against so against some weapons. So if someone comes roll against shooting, that's the, that's the sort of the name of the game. Crusaders are now very very durable, are still very very durable to shooting. Um but, 9th edition is a combat game, okay, and the moment that these crusaders get into combat, and considering they're armed with power swords, you know, that's kind of what they're doing, and they're going to be on the front lines, things start getting a bit tricky. So, they are going to be, uh, if, they're in, if they're in combat, they won't get a cover save, uh, they, won't, they won't get a cover save at all, so what ends up happening is and psychic barrier can be it can be denied and you can't use take cover either so you could easily find yourself when you're in combat you can't use take cover on them you don't get you don't get cover saves for being in combat either suddenly you find your crusaders are on a um on a, only only a two plus armor save Every marine out there comes with a starter chainsaw these days. Bam, you're stuck on your three plus uh, invulnerable save. Straight if if you got psychic barrier off. Yeah, as an assault an assault unit with uh, a starter chainsaw and assault doctrine will sh force you, and you didn't get psychic barrier off, will force you straight onto that four plus invulnerable save. Yeah, straight onto it. So it's not ideal. It's not ideal. So the point is, is that in if you have all the things set up right for them, they'll be really durable for shooting. If you have them on the front lines, holding objectives, getting involved in the brawl, they're probably going to be on a three plus and vulnerable save now. And the other thing to mention is, it used to be just a, it used to be very simple to get crusaders to work. Okay, you put a one single power on them, they've got a two plus of vulnerable save. Now, if you want to start replicating the same thing, you've got to stack on a load of buffs. That Ideally, you, you may not want to stack all those buffs on a single squad. You may want them to actually, you know, spread spread the love. You know, buff your Bulgars a bit, buff your, uh, your Crusaders a bit, buff your, your Conscripts a bit. Can't really do that now. So Crusaders now require a lot more investment to make work. Uh, to the same level that they were at before they got nerfed. And even then, you can be forced onto a 3 plus save now rather than a 2 plus. So that's a shame. Uh, I can see Crusaders having some uses. I'll sit them on an objective and I'll be in cover and I'll be in a 2 plus save. And so most indirect fire weapons have a most, not looking at the guards, have a have a low AP, so they'll probably be okay. But long story short, guys, it's not a buff for Crusaders. It's not a buff. Um, it's not ideal. The other thing that's in the FAQ is the Sword of the Desert Tigers, which is the Relic Qatar, uh, Talan Power Sword. It's got plus one strength now, so that's good. So um, that's a slight buff for, us, for a, an obscure Relic to bring it in line with the Power Swords. Now, so we've started off negatively, and then we started off with a little buff, and now we're going to move into a bigger buff, which is essentially the, there's, there has been some changes around whoever wins the dice off has to go first now that has that is a good change in the main core uh FA, uh core rule book because it means that now people will be less inclined to deploy defensively to try and make their opponent waste the first turn because they might deploy defensively and then get a turn one and then be out of position 
So now you kind of have to play if you're going to get turn one. Because if you do, you want to have to be able to capitalise on it. So I like that. There's also the change where you... Um, also the change where you... Uh, if you go second, you score at the end of turn five now. So you, you score at the beginning of every single turn normally. But then you get to turn five. Uh, and you score your primary points at the end if you go second. And basically the reason for that is... Previously, whoever went first in their turn five could put everything into pushing the enemy off the objectives... And then it gets to the opponent's turn five and they're on no objectives and so they can't score any points and it's just a bit unfair. So now if you go second, you get the chance to still catch up um, in turn five, which is good. I think that will both that's both good and bad for guard. If you're in it's, it's, it's good and bad for everyone. It's a nice equals equals change. I like that one. Um, one of the biggest changes, they've changed the way that uh, Bring It Down works, where now, essentially, if it's a small vehicle, it's if it's 10 wounds or less, it's 1 point, and if it's 11 wounds to 19 wounds, it's 2 points, and if it's a massive vehicle, it's 3 points. But basically, guys, they've Chimeras and Sentinels and whatnot are only giving away 1 point now, and Hellhounds and Lehman Russes and stuff are giving away... Um, two points which is a decrease it's a big decrease now they haven't stopped the overlap between thin the ranks and bring it down so a chimera will still give away two points overall because it'll give one point away from the ranks and one point away for bring it down but it is a 33 percent decrease in the amount of victory points it's going to give away you could turn up to the field of battle with 10 chimeras now and the enemy can't max out bring it down and in theory they couldn't max out than the ranks either you could just take a look like characters and bullgrins and stuff so in theory we now are in a much better position in terms of secondary bleed would i like to see them get rid of the overlap between thin the ranks and bring it down yes i think that is what's needed to truly level the playing field but this is a step in the right direction and as i mentioned in the points value videos this is fantastic for mechanized infantry guard this is really really good you can turn up with 10 chimeras and still not give away max bring it down points which is really good and i mean it's not impossible but it'll be fairly difficult for for the enemy to to, to take uh to take 10 chimeras off you you know but we'll see if you know but basically chimeras are back baby now there's a couple of other vehicles that i want to check out and again apologies guys that i'm doing this a little bit rough around the edges but I just want to have a look at some of the other vehicles that we have in our repertoire that might allow us to um, take advantage of this. So let's have a look at the Basilisk. Ah, it's still got 11 wounds, unfortunately. I was thinking that maybe the Basilisk only had 10 because uh, it's open topped. And I know it's only tough than 6, but no, it's still got 11 wounds. So it looks like the main beneficiary of this is going to be um, Scout Sentinels and Chimeras. Now, if there's any other vehicles that I've missed, guys, especially from Forge World, I've got a bit of a blind spot there, please let me know. But that seems to be uh, the ones that are going to benefit the most from it, if you look at it percentage-wise. So percentage-wise, a Chimera, uh, it, just on Bring It Down, just Bring It Down, is now giving up 50% less points, and a Lehman Russ is giving up 33% less points because it's gone from giving up three points to giving up two points. Uh, and then if you take into account thin the ranks, a Chimera is giving up 33 less points because it's gone from giving up three points down to two points. And a Lehman Russ has gone from giving up four points down to three points. So that's only a 25% decrease. So looking at it percentage wise, you're better off taking a swarm of light vehicles now, which is cool. It does now mean you can turn up with three squads of three Sentinels and you will only give away nine victory points, which is cool. Definitely opens up Sentinel spam as a real, real thing. Now, I want to do an honorable mention here, guys. I know this is an Imperial Guard video, but I'm going to just do an honorable mention for Gene Stealer Cult, okay? Because I think that as Guard players, we have to keep our minds open to trying to be as competitive as possible and throwing in a few cult bits and bobs here and there definitely uh definitely is is can boost the power of our army so one of the things that i'm looking at here from a guard cult crossover perspective is genius to the cult mechanized armies 
Okay, now jeans look cool. Mech in many ways can be argued to be stronger than guard mechanized warfare. Your guys can shoot out the top of your Goliath trucks. Your Goliath trucks are relatively inexpensive. It's the same points cost for a Goliath truck with twin auto cannon that it is for a Chimera with a multi laser and a heavy bolter. And the auto cannons have got better range, better strength. The multi laser is a bit of a waste of a weapon. So overall, the damage and it comes with a uh, heavy stuff as standard. So it definitely has potential. Now it's only toughness six with a four plus save, but it does have rugged construction, so it has a six plus invulnerable save. So against anti dedicated anti tank, the the, uh, the Galar truck wins out. Um, so yeah, the, the Galar truck's definitely looking strong, definitely looking very very strong in the new edition. Um, you you can sit them there as as pillboxes they can move and shoot without penalty you can take a cult trait that allows the infantry inside to move and shoot without penalty you can make all the vehicles and the bearers and, and the weapon people inside hit on a three plus thanks to a jackal alphas and now thanks to the points increase on infantry squads uh gene to look cool. infantry isn't looking too expensive now i'll do a separate video on that because i believe it deserves its own separate one but long story short, guys, is if you are looking at taking a mechanized infantry guard force, I highly recommend you dip your toe and you have a little look at maybe a, a, how a mechanized cult force could do the same thing, but maybe better. Okay, guys inside can shoot out. Everyone's hitting on threes. You can put last can equivalents in the back that can shoot out. The vehicles are better. And your sentinel equivalents, your uh, ridge runners, yes, they are more expensive. But if you're taking them with as las cannon sentinels it's 50 points for a single las cannon sentinel or 70 points so yes 20 point increase for a, a ridge runner but it's on average going to get more shots with its main weapon it comes with two heavy stubbers it comes with a six up in vulnerable save it's got more movement um and again it's still and it's got more wounds so mechanized geotypical is looking powerful but i'm going to do uh, a proper video on that later i just want to do an honourable mention right now. I'll spend a minute mentioning it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If I've missed anything, please let me know. Put it down in the comment section and then I can read it and I can address it in another video or I can pin a comment to the, to the top of the video so other people can see it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and of course, I'll see you guys next time.